Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the ECFW Athletic Stadium model for today's second video. So this is your 30-day European outlook, but we will extend out days 42, weeks 5 and 6 as well, because... Why not? We'll do that uh, as well as the 30-day uh, look. Yeah. So I shall get on with that for you in a moment. Just to say that the first video today was 6 a.m. upload. Very cold and wintry 6 a.m. Uh, forecast today. Please check out that video if you'd like to do that. We've got a 10 to 14 day coming up for you later on this afternoon. And then uh, this evening we will be uh, updating Snow Watch, I think for you and uh, we'll have a look at the latest snow prospects not a snow watch live but a snow watch video upload that will be coming up uh, this evening please like share and subscribe on the video thank you so very much everybody uh for doing that i hope you're having a lovely tuesday morning right so you're gonna start off with week one uh mean sea level pressure anomaly for europe lots of low pressure Low pressure um, across the north and uh, west of Europe and out into the Atlantic. High pressure trying to reach uh, towards Spain, but the dominant high is this blocking area of high pressure around Greenland and Iceland. And of course, that brings cold air into much of northern and western Europe. Well, southern Europe on the southern side of the low pressures will have milder temperatures. The 500 millibar heights look like this again you see that large and extensive blocking area of high pressure around green and ice and deep trough of low pressure cold trough across the north and west europe that brings cold air into the north and west europe high pressure down towards the far southern part of europe will allow um milder or warmer air to come in from the southwest so our temperatures look like that Temperature on is for uh, this week. By the way, I didn't say what week was, did I? Uh, week one is the 6th to the 13th March, the week that we are currently in. So very cold across northern Europe, Scandinavia, uh, standing out being bitterly cold, the Baltic Sea states, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, cold as well. UK and Ireland looking cold, as does the low countries and northern parts of Germany. But south of that, it's actually quite mild. Much of France looking uh, mild and average, most parts of Spain, Portugal, and into Mediterranean, mild and average there. Italy is mild and average over the Adriatic, Adriatic, I should say, into the Vulcans to the Black Sea. A significantly mild and average temperatures through there. And into the eastern Med, Greece and Turkey, also looking mild. These mild temperatures extend up to the Ukraine as well and into the southwest of Russia. And precipitation-wise, uh, we look like this. So dry, but very cold, of course, over Scandinavia. And any precipitation that falls there will fall as snow. Could be very snowy through southern parts of Sweden, into Denmark, and around the Baltic Sea states of Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania, too. Into uh, the UK and Ireland, rain, sleet, snow... You name it, it could be happening there in the uh, week ahead or here as I'm in the UK. And then south of that, we're talking about rain through France, low countries, much of uh, Germany. Uh, rain into the eastern part of Europe as well. But go further south and east of that, generally it's quite dry. It's quite wet through Portugal, northwest of Spain, but the central part of the Med looking dry from east of Spain to Italy. And Greece and Turkey looking generally dry as well. So not a bad week, actually. Um, forget a little bit of spring sunshine and warmth. Week two will be the 13th to the 20th of March. Again, we see blocking up towards green, but maybe easing a little bit. The low pressure perhaps going a bit further northwards along with the jet stream. But low pressure is in, in control through large portions of Europe. 500 millibar heights look like that. Notice the blocking again more towards the Canadian side of Greenland. That probably take the coldest of the air into northern eastern America. For northern west Europe, we probably see a bit of a recovery in the temperatures with a little bit more of an Atlantic flow, but it still looks quite unsettled. The temperature anomaly looks like that. So it is still cold and average, actually, for Scandinavia and into northern parts of Britain as well. Scotland and northern England, cold of an average through there. Up to Greenland, Iceland, cold of an average here. Also, uh, elsewhere, though, it's mild of an average, especially 
through southern and eastern parts of Spain. Uh, quite a warm week to come there. And uh, into the Med, above average temperatures there, overall to the eastern side of the Mediterranean, above average, and extending north through France into southern parts of Germany and also southern parts of Poland and to the Ukraine and the Black Sea. Again, we see that the uh, temperatures are above average through those regions. Um, precipitation wise again but just southern Europe looks quite dry so dry through Spain into the Med um, maybe a little bit more showery in towards Greece and Turkey but real wet weather is further north was again the UK, Ireland, uh, France, low countries, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands Germany, Denmark, into Poland, above average rainfall in those areas, and rather above average precipitation further north as well, of course that is still likely to be snow, drier than average through Norway, a little bit on the wet from an average side for some parts of Sweden, again, a lot of that is going to be snow, the further northwards and northeast as you go, with those colder than average temperature anomalies. Week 3 will be the 20th to the 27th, of March, it looks like we're facing a bit of Scandinavian high then, maybe, high pressure building between Greenland and Scandinavia, that could bring the wind in from an easterly direction into northern parts of Europe, with below pressure looking like it's pushing it southwards, 500 millibar height anomaly for week 3, looks like that blocking area of high pressure around Greenland to Scandinavia, low pressure Across southern and southeastern parts of Europe again, winds likely coming in from an easterly direction. Week three temperature anomalies look like that. So colder than average through Scandinavia and the northeastern part of Europe again, sort of um, northern Germany, northern Poland, up to Denmark, north of that to the peninsula, uh, Norway, Sweden, Finland, over to the Baltic Sea states of Latvia, Estonia, and also. Lithuania as well, looking colder than average through those areas. Mild average in the extreme eastern part of Europe, from Greece up to southwestern Russia, especially folks around the Black Sea and Turkey, and mild average through Spain and Portugal, elsewhere nearer normal with the uh, temperature anomaly or no signal. Precipitation wise, we see that it's getting more unsettled in the eastern and southeastern part of Europe. So, some heavy rain there. Dry through Scandinavia to northern parts of Scotland. That's where we've got that blocking area of high pressure, of course, and a dry down towards Spain and Portugal as well. Right, week four is going to be the 27th of March to the 3rd of April. Um, high pressure, again, is very focused towards Scandinavia, lower pressure across southern and eastern parts of Europe. The 500 millibar heights with a trough of low pressure in the east and southeast of Europe, a blocking area of high pressure from Scandinavia up to Greenland. Again, that could be bringing the wind from the east there. How's the temperature anomaly looking? Um, so again, it looks cold across much of the north and the northeast of Europe with below average temperatures through there. Modern average temperature creeping into the far, the far, <coughs> far west, I'm losing my voice, uh, the far west of Europe through Ireland into Spain and Portugal. Modern average temperatures there. Otherwise, it's a very weak signal the further out we are going. And the uh, precipitation anomaly again, see where that high pressure is over Scandinavia, so driving average through there. Trough of low pressure, bringing quite a lot of wet weather to the east and the southeast of Europe. Right, so it's your 30 day look, okay, done and dusted. Let's just go for weeks five and six before we go. So this is week five, mean cell pressure anomaly from the 3rd to the 10th of April. <clears throat> Again, the suggestion is towards high pressure close to Scandinavia here. 500 millibar heights looking like that. Again, quite a bit of blocking within high latitude, low pressure in the Atlantic. Temperature anomaly for week five. Um, mild and average just in the far west and in southern parts of Europe, but generally quite a weak signal. Cold again for the far north and northeast. And uh, precipitation wise, a little bit dry for the northern and western areas, but a weak signal. Week six will be the 10th to 17th of April. Um, again, still focusing that high pressure over Scandinavia. So a lot of easterly winds to come for northern. Europe, I think, as we go from March into April, the uh, 500 millibar height looked like that. High pressure again, blocking to the north. The precipitation anomaly 
looks like that temperature on, I should say, looks like that. Coldest in extreme north and northeast, mildest out to west and across southern parts of Europe. But a weak signal and precipitation, lastly, looks like this, <clears throat> largely on the dry up and average side in the north of Europe. Right, so uh, cold initially for Northern Europe, and with hints of Scandinavian high, even into the second half of March and early April, that cold weather could be maintained in northern parts of Europe, which we'll see about that. Remember, any forecast beyond five, seven days comes with large bits of salt and uh, health warnings attached, so, you know, it could look different. Could look at this one again on Saturday morning with a UK and Ireland focus. We will do the next uh, extended uh, European outlook with the ECM Sony model next Tuesday. Thank you so much to ECM, doing after INT for supplying the charts. I'm going to stop me over there and go and rest my voice, which I think is about to <laughs> give out, and I shall see a little bit later on for the 10 to 14 day for this extended forecast for Europe. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.